part two in this series of four videos walked you through how you can use the CDM website to obtain the relevant attribute and class name information which are needed to define your custom view. This video will show you how you can identify the join criteria to glue these separate classes and attributes into a single custom view. It will then walk you through creating an XML file which can then be used to generate our example custom view. So in part two, we identified the classes and attributes we will need to use in our view. The process also revealed the intermediary parent classes which we needed to traverse to link implicit attributes to the computer system and database server top level classes. For example, the IP address attribute dot notation can only be accessed from the computer system class via the IP interface class. The primary data file and name attributes can only be accessed via the database server class via the SQL server class. You may remember in part one of this demo, we saw this class relationship diagram provided in the CDM website, which shows you at a high level the join attributes that can be used to link separate classes together. We will now go into the CDM and look at each of these classes to see if we can identify the join attributes we will need to reference in our XML file. So let's first look at the SQL Server database class. If you will remember, we are getting the name and primary data file attributes from this class. If we look down the data type column, we can see that the parent implicit attribute allows us to link to the SQL Server parent class. So we can now draw this link relationship between these two classes on our diagram. As we can see, the parent attribute can be used to link both the SQL Server database and SQL Server classes together. So let's now look at the SQL Server class to see how we can join this class to the database server class. If we look down the attribute list and this time look at the included by column, we'll notice that the attribute home is included in the database server class. So this makes it an ideal candidate to link both of these classes together. So we can now draw that link relationship on our diagram. The home attribute in SQL Server and Database Server can be used to link both of these classes together. So now let's look at the Database Server class. If we look down the attribute list, we can see there's an implicit attribute called host. And if we look in the data type column, we can see the parent class for this attribute is computer system. So this makes it an ideal candidate to link both the database server class to the computer system class. Using this same methodology, we can use the CDM website to identify the link attributes that can be used to join each of our required classes together. For example, to link the computer system class to the operating system class, we will use the OS running attribute. To link the IP interface class to the IP address class, we will use the IP address attribute. To link the IP interface class to the L2 interface class, we will use the L2 interface attribute. Finally, to link the computer system class to the IP interface class, we will use the IP interfaces attribute, thus completing all the links between our required classes. We now have all the information we need to build our XML file, userviews.xml. I'm not going to go into detail in this video about the different types of XML elements you can use within userviews.xml. These are all fully documented here in IBM's TADIM Information Center. Just do a search for custom view within the Information Center and you'll find all of this documentation which goes into full detail about the elements you can use within this file. Okay, so let's put together our XML file based on the CDM information we've gathered. First of all, we need to put this header statement, which defines the encoding format. Next, we specify the views element, which will tell the user view script we wish to create a custom view. Here we have a simple comment statement. The view class name element specifies we want to initialize our custom view, in this case at the SQL Server Database class. 
The view name element allows us to declare the name we want to give this view. In this case I'm stating we want the view name to be called cm underscore orb data underscore mssql underscore servers underscore v. The include primary keys element allows us to specify whether we want this view to be joined with other views at a later stage. Changing this value to true will result in primary keys being generated for the view. In this example we're leaving this setup false. This field element section allows us to declare which attributes from the SQL Server database class we want to include in our view. In our case we want to include the primary data file and name attributes. So in this section we've declared we want to create a view called CM orb data MSSQL servers underscore v. We want to start the view at the SQL Server database class and we want to include two attributes from this class. So going back to our class diagram, you can now see our XML file at this stage has declared we want to include two attributes from the SQL Server database class, primary data file and name. So now we want to declare our other classes and associated attributes using the link attribute information we identified earlier. We can do this by using the nested class name element. We started our view at the SQL Server database class Therefore, we will need to express our links based on this starting position. If you can remember, we identified that we will need to link the SQL Server database class to the SQL Server class using the link attribute parent. This nested class name statement allows us to do this. So going back to our diagram, our current XML has now included this intermediary class using the parent link attribute. The next thing we need to do is to link the SQL Server class to the database class using the attribute name home. This nested class name statement allows us to do this. Now we have linked to the database server class we can specify we want to include the product version attribute from this class in our view. If we now look at our diagram we can see our XML statement has linked together three database classes and specified we now want to include three attributes in our view product version, primary data file and name. We now want to link the database server class to the computer system class using the host link attribute we identified earlier. We do this using this nested class name statement. Now we have linked the computer system class we can declare the attributes we require from this class in our custom view. FQDN, CPU type, num CPUs, CPU speed, and memory size. Looking at our diagram, we can now see our XML statement has now linked the computer system class to the database server class and brought in five additional attributes in our custom view from this class. FQDM, num CPUs, CPU type, CPU speed, and memory size. Next, we want to connect the computer system class to the IP interface class so we can include the MAC address and IP address attributes in our view. We do this using the IP interface's attribute name. Now we've connected these two classes together, we can connect the IP interface class to the IP address class using the IP address link attribute. This allows us to include the dot notation attribute in our custom view. We can now also connect the IP interface class to the L2 interface class using the L2 interface link attribute. So we can now include the MAC address attribute HW address in our view. These statements allow us to add the three additional classes to our computer system class. IP interface, IP address and L2 interface and allows us to incorporate two additional attributes in our view HW address and dot notation. And finally we want to link our computer system class to the operating system class so we can include the operating system name in our view. We do this by using the link attribute OS running. Now we've joined to the operating system class 
we can specify we want to add the OS name attribute from this class in our custom view. So going back to our diagram, we can see we have linked all the classes we, re we require in our view and declared the attributes we need from each class. We're now ready to create our custom view. We will cover this final step in part four of this video presentation.